10 Things to Do and 3 Not to Do in Iceland Travel Guide Reykjavik Modern, dynamic, young, and constantly expanding, Reykjavik is often the first stop on a trip to Iceland. The contemporary presence of an airport and a port has greatly contributed to the prestige of the city, where over a third of the entire nation's population lives. The contribution of the English and Americans is also noteworthy. During World War II, the island became a crucial hub for Allied forces engaged in countering the Nazi advance. In exchange for military occupation, the small island of Iceland obtained a significant boost to its road and energy infrastructure, allowing the country to make a definitive leap in terms of economic and social development. The fishing industry is also very important. For years, it has been the main source of income and still plays a leading role alongside the rapidly growing tourism industry. There are several things to see in Reykjavik. Some highlights include the old harbor area, now filled with Chinese shops, bars, and restaurants, Halgrim Sjörska Church, the Harpa Conference Center, and the futuristic Perlin, a rotating glass dome. Museums and spas are also present throughout the territory. Mivaten Lake One of the most stunning places in all of Iceland is Joku Sarlon, located over 300 kilometers from Reykjavik and 75 kilometers from the city of Hofen. The latter generally assumed as a starting base to more easily reach the location. Joku Sarlon is a lagoon that first appeared in the mid-1930s and significantly expanded following the melting of the Breyamekekol glacier. The most beautiful feature of this frozen lake is the presence of numerous turquoise and blue icebergs. It's a breathtaking sight, especially if you're lucky enough to visit the place on a sunny day free from clouds. The lake is also navigable, provided you book a boat tour in advance. Tingvelir from Christianity as a state religion year to the Declaration of Independence from Denmark, it is at Tingvellir that Icelanders have made many of the most important decisions for the nation's life. Not surprisingly, the name of the location comes from the combination of Ting meaning assembly and Volir, which instead means plain. We're talking about a wonderful outdoor location about 35 kilometers from Reykjavik, a place that Icelanders declared a national park in 1928 and that UNESCO included among World Heritage Sites in 2004. But that's not all. In addition to its historical and naturalistic importance, Tingvellir Park is also extremely important from a geological point of view. It represents the junction point between the Eurasian and American tectonic plates. Recent studies have shown that the Almanagia and Rafniga gorges, respectively to the north and south of the park, widen by several millimeters each year. In this regard, a visit to the Silfra crevice is a must-see. This is a swimmer-friendly fissure between the Eurasian and American tectonic plates, a paradise for diving and snorkeling enthusiasts. Blue Lagoon The Blue Lagoon is Iceland's most important thermal center and certainly one of the most famous in the world. It is located about 40 kilometers from the capital, Reykjavik, and is daily connected to it by an efficient shuttle service provided by the park's owner. The turquoise and blue color of the waters of this lagoon is breathtaking, even though it is not a natural occurrence. It is actually the wastewater from the nearby geothermal power plant of Svarsengi, which has been operational since 1976. However, this circumstance does not detract from the health benefits of these waters, which are particularly useful in relieving certain skin conditions. The healing properties of the Blue Lagoon's waters are due to the mineralization of the volcanic subsoil from which the energy for the domestic needs of the population is also extracted. In short, Icelanders have been able to exploit the enormous geothermal potential available, even from a tourism standpoint. Especially during the summer months, queues for the Blue Lagoon are very long, so it is strongly recommended to book in advance. Husavik Well Watching Husavik is a village located 60 kilometers north of Lake Mivatn, famous for being the place in Iceland with the highest probability of spotting a whale. There is also a museum dedicated to the cetacean. Let's not forget that in the past, whale hunting was an important economic activity for the local population, where it might be interesting to go, especially if traveling with children. Moreover, the whale watching boat tour is an activity that is absolutely suitable for the little ones. However, it should be taken into account that it is possible not to be able to spot any whale or to only see their tail or some movements in the distance. In short, there is no certainty, but it is an experience to be had. Geyser Located about 100 kilometers from Reykjavik in the Hakadulur Valley, on the southwestern side of Iceland lies Geyser, the oldest geyser in the world. No, there is no typo here as just read. The term geyser actually derives from the Icelandic verb gyosha, which means to erupt or to explode. The common root of the two terms is evident. In reality, there's another geyser to see in the Hakadulur Valley. It is called Stroker, and of the two, is the only one to erupt systematically at intervals ranging from 4 to 8 minutes. 
The hot water can reach well over 60 meters in height, giving visitors a natural spectacle that leaves them in awe. A couple of kilometers from Geyser, there's another wonder that is absolutely worth seeing. We are talking about Gullfoss, which with a drop of over 30 meters also provides remarkable suggestions. Dedifoss. This waterfall is located about 40 kilometers north of Lake Miftan and originates from the Jokosa Afoyum, a glacial river that flows into the Arctic Ocean coming from Batna Jokul, a vast ice sheet on the southeastern side of the island. Dedifoss is about 100 meters wide and over 40 meters long. What is most impressive is the power of the water jet, which can be heard from over one kilometer away. Rainbows are also frequent and always beautiful to capture with smartphones and reflex cameras. But it doesn't end there because two other waterfalls called Selfoss and Hafrigofoss also spring from the Jokosa at Foyum and are worth seeing as well. They represent yet another testimony of the wild Icelandic nature. Dainyandi Dainyandi, declared a national natural monument back in 1981, cannot be missing from the list of Iceland's most beautiful waterfalls. It is located inland from the fjord of Arnardfjordr and is over 100 meters long. However, the most beautiful detail is the fact that the waterfall has seven cascades with a shape that some compare to a wedding dress. Dainyandi, which means the thundering one in Icelandic, is also known as Fjallfoss. For those who want to venture up here, we are 360 kilometers from Reykjavik. There's a fully equipped camping area. Havera Valir. The most stunning landscapes of Iceland are, in fact, found in the highlands, many of which can only be visited during the summer months. The most famous destination in this part of Iceland is undoubtedly the geothermal site of Havera Valir, halfway between the Langjökull and Hofsjökull glaciers. It consists of around 20 natural pools, each with its own particular charm in varying shapes and sizes. The two most famous and popular with bathers are Blavir and Fagravir. But as previously mentioned, all of the pools are very impressive. Additionally, the area offers numerous hiking trails, ideal for trekking enthusiasts. Definitely a must-see. Jokusarlon Lagoon Jokusarlon Lagoon is a spectacular glacier lagoon located in southeastern Iceland. It is one of the most photographed places in Iceland and offers a unique experience for visitors. With the lagoon's waters hosting huge floating icebergs and the chance to spot seals and other wildlife, the view of the lagoon is spectacular in every season, but during winter, the experience can be even more magical with the possibility of seeing the northern lights. Joku Sarlon Lagoon is a must-see for anyone visiting Iceland and offers a breathtaking view of the region's natural beauty. Four warnings. One, avoid booking a hotel or hostel too close to Lake Mivatan. It's true that the midges, which give the lake its name, can be really annoying. The place is very suggestive, but I suggest staying in guest houses far from its shores. There are many farms where you can stay, perhaps even in winter, to admire the northern lights. 2. Do not venture into extreme trekking without a guide. It is absolutely recommended to go on a trek on the largest glacier in Europe. The reason is very simple. Besides the remarkable scenery, it is not often that you can have such an experience without exerting too much effort to reach the glacier. At our latitudes, perennial ice is found at no less than 2,000 meters, and reaching the glaciers and walking at this height can be tiring and problematic. In Iceland, the Vatnajökull glacier is at sea level. However, do not make the mistake of venturing among the ice without a guide. 3. Don't travel in summer if you don't like crowds. Obviously, it depends on the mindset with which one approaches a trip to Iceland. If you want to avoid finding yourself in line with organized groups all the time, then it's better to avoid the summer months. It's better to visit Iceland a little before or after the high season, or why not, during the winter. In any case, both in summer and, even more so, in winter months, it's essential to plan travel well. Iceland is a wonderful island, but at the same time, full of pitfalls. Therefore, it's crucial to always inform yourself beforehand about weather conditions and, in case you move on foot for some excursions, on the state of the tracks you intend to take. 4. Do not stay in large international hotels, but prefer small guest houses. When it comes to accommodation in Iceland, it's best to avoid large international hotels and opt for small guest houses instead. Especially during high season, it's essential to book in advance, especially in remote areas where tourist facilities are scarce. Even in larger villages or tourist spots, I recommend booking small family-run guest houses or hostels. Besides the undeniable savings, you can find accommodations in truly spectacular and remote locations, like the beautiful house of Paul, located at the head of a fjord in West Fjords, where we stayed. My dream is to return to visit Paul in winter when the landscape is illuminated with the stunning Aurora Borealis.